Are you thinking about being an RV owner? Want to see our beautiful country? Want to be part of the RV lifestyle? Do you want to learn more? Are you missing freedom? Do you want to travel? Do you want to explore? Then join us at RV Talk Radio. Proudly sponsored by RV Lock. Hello RV Travel Buddies, this is Rob from RV Talk Radio. We have a great show today, we're going to talk about RVing a little bit, and then we have a great interview today with a person I really, really love to watch, and it's RVer TV, and his name's Russ, and we have a great interview with him, talking about how he got started and all kinds of stuff, so stay tuned. But before we get started... We need to let you know we have another contest coming up from our sponsor, RV Lock. So next week we'll be announcing how to enter our giveaway, this month's giveaway, for a free RV Lock. It's a secured wireless and keyless entry system for your fifth wheel trailer or camper. And let me tell you, they're awesome. I also need to remind you guys to contact us, talk to us, tell us what you want to talk about. We love getting mail from you. Uh, you can reach us from the website at rvtalkradio.com and just use the uh, contact button there and uh, tell us what's on your mind. Or you can contact me directly at rob, R-O-B, at rvtalkradio. Today's main subject is getting ready to begin RVing. So my subject will be assuming that you've made the decision to be an RVer and I'm going to assume that either you've bought or getting ready to buy your RV and you're just about ready to go. And what I want to do is kind of go through a few items that have come up with me and Sherry and a lot of folks that we've interviewed and they've told us about planning and items that are a necessity before you start your first RV trip. So depending on your situation, whether you're selling everything or keeping your house or you don't even have a house at all and you're just going straight into an RV, the things you want to think about right off the bat is making sure you know how you want to store things if you want to put things in storage, a, a good overhead cost for that. If you have a house, how are you going to maintain it? And that's a whole nother subject in itself. And getting someone to watch it or rent it out or get your kids to watch it. Uh, that's one thing that, that to keep in mind. And then another main thing is how are you going to deal with your mail? And we'll have a show kind of devoted to that, uh, talking about how to set up a mailbox um, for example, Sherry and I, we uh, went to a UPS store, set up a, a mailbox, and uh, we wanted to make sure we had the service of we could be anywhere, and every two or three weeks we could actually call the mail service, have them gather all of our mail, put it, stuff it in one big envelope or our box, and ship it to us at the location that we're at at the time. It's also important at this point is to make sure that your insurance will cover you in your RV for traveling. If you have a typical insurance company like State Farm or Farmers or something like that, um, if you're living in your RV full time, you don't have the coverage you think you have. Your homeowners may not apply. Your RV insurance will cover the unit, but it won't cover the contents inside so there's some special insurance companies there's uh, only two that I know of right now and in uh, another service good Sam is a good place to go progressive I understand handles real RV insurance and MetLife uh, I believe also does RV insurance so Sherry and I are actually at that point of trying to decide which ones we like the most and we'll tell you more about that as we get more data and of course, before you start RVing and hitting the road, and whether it's just short trips or whatever, 
running equipment is really important. So this is the time to make sure that you have good spare tires, good tires on your truck if you're pulling, and good tires on your uh, motorhome or your Class C or Super C that you're doing or using, sorry, and making sure you have equipment, tools, and resources to maintain your tires and, of course, brakes. Um, if you got a large unit like a, a motorhome, you probably want to make sure you have a good tire service because you typically do not carry a spare for big rigs like that. Uh, a good tire service like AAA and there's some others out there that um, I think through Good Sam you can also get a good tire service that'll come out wherever you're at and assist you. And of course with renting gear you also want to think about your engine and um, uh, make sure that you have brand new oil, that you got good quality oil, make sure you're not leaking oil, make sure that engine's running good. This is also a good time to get the oil changed to make sure all your lubricants are, are there, all your uh, Zerk fittings have been uh, greased up and just an overall take care of the running gear, get it in the best condition possible before you hit the road. Know what needs to be worked on, fix what's necessity uh, a necessity for safety and if you just have your tire or, or your brakes looked at at least find out what the condition are is of your drums of your brakes and pads so as you go you have a good idea when it's time to get those things looked at or changed and you might think this is silly but it's not but this is the time to realize whether you have a fifth wheel a trailer or a motorhome Find out what kind of fuses you have. You will definitely want to have spare fuses, not for the, just the fuse box, but some of your inline fuses too. Find out what's in your rig, along with your vehicle, um, especially the newer trucks. Uh, so many th items, including your throttle, depend on electronics, and a lot of them have circuits. Or, or fuses and it's important that you have spare fuses with you because I've had severe things happen to my vehicles and it turned out just to be a, a fuse and how frustrating is that after you've paid for towing and the whole works to find out it was just a fuse so fuses and lights or light spare light bulbs at least ones will cover your brake lights uh, running lights not so much you can take care of those later but if you want to save yourself a ticket and possibly getting hurt on the road, make sure that those brake lights and blinkers are working not only on the rig, but if you're towing, it's also on your vehicle. And the next thing you want to make sure you have is a good mapping or navigation system. If you're old-fashioned and you just like to use Atlas type things or maps, great. There's some great books out there. I'd suggest you go to Camping World, go mosey around and see what's out there. But um, this day and age, a good navigation system comes in handy. Um, Sherry and I, we use a Magellan, and we got ours at Camping World that also loads all the good SAM uh, campsites out there. And it has the whole database in there, so we really like our navigation system. But good old-fashioned atlases and maps, uh, of course, if you have a computer and you're getting kind of good at it, you can also pull up places that you're going to go and take a look at Google Maps and take a look at the parks that you're going to and look at them in a satellite view and see uh, just if it's the kind of parking area you want to be. You'll be amazed what you can see from a satellite view. I've heard time and time again people look at an RV park, then they'll pull it up on their computer, go to the satellite view and take a look at it from the satellite and actually have decided not to go to certain RV parks because they got a glimpse of what the parking's like and how close everybody is together and it may, may not be your cup of tea so use the tools um, having an atlas having good navigation system and maps on those and of course your computer so important make sure you have that don't do it after you start and of course if you have pets before you start RVing there's a couple of things you need to know, and this is, um, you guys know we have Cinder, our chocolate lab, and a cat. So we've talked to our vet, and we've made sure that our, our pets are young. Uh, Cinder's three, so is our cat. We got them at the same time. They've got all their normal shots. 
and then some. We've, we asked our vet that if we go down south or in certain areas, what are some, other, some of the other vaccines we should have for our pets? And there is extra vaccines that you may want to have for your pets. And we've made sure that our pets have gotten all of those vaccines because there is things down south that don't exist up north. So having that um, in your arsenal is important. The other thing is uh, different areas have different issues with either ticks or fleas. So we, we use Advantage, but there's other things out there. There's edible um, medicines for uh, ticks and fleas, and there's also uh, Frontline too. We, tend to, we, we like Advantage, and it works good for Cinder and the kitty. And nothing's more miserable than finding a tick on your uh, pet. It's uncomfortable for them, and it's also unhealthy. They could actually get sick from that. So this is the time to... Talk to your vet. Find out what your pet's needs are. Give your vet an idea where you're going and what things that you need to be aware of that will keep your pet safe and healthy. Now, I know that taking off to be an RVer is a great opportunity to get away from everybody. And you don't have to... Well, you're trying to get your freedom. But there's a couple of things that especially us older folks might want to keep in mind and it's and we're talking the young families too is give certain people or family members or best friends contact information on how to get a hold of you whether it's email or cell phones or any other means that they can talk to you and get a message out to you the other thing that you'll find out in this interview coming up with RV or TV is if you have a health issue, whether you're young or old, where you're going is important to identify where the closest hospitals or medical facilities are in relationship to where you're camping, RVing, or boondocking. So I've never really mentioned that before, and, and, and it's going to be brought up in the interview that's coming up, but... That's critical for folks that may have heart conditions or you know, things that they need to be aware of. Make sure that if you're going to go to Quartzsite or maybe Havasu or some of these places in Montana, ask yourself, where is the closest hospital? Where is the closest medical clinics? It's easy to find. Just get on your uh, computer, do a little research, and just take that little precaution. It may save your life. And last but not least, uh, on my little list of things to be prepared for, is be a little bit of a prepper. And when I say that is, in the cases where, let's say you're between Reno and Las Vegas, and you break down, and you have to wait for a tire service, and you may be there for a while, or you're actually in, in a place that's even worse than that and remote, make sure you have spare water, spare food, uh, dried food that needs water only, extra pet food, anything that can allow you to survive a couple of days not being plugged into the grid. Just in case, um, it's just a good idea and smart and will take away any panicking you might have if you happen to break down in a remote area. So once again, be a good RV prepper. So, so now that you're ready to go and you're going to hit the road, I've heard this time and time again that new RVers tend to just hit the road and start going. And so I'd like to try to give some advice to a, a, a new couple or a new family going out on the road and they're just ready to go, but they get so excited that they don't do very good planning. And when I say planning... If you're going to drive, things you need to keep in mind, whether you're driving with kids, just regular adults, or older adults, identify in your route where the closest, uh, say, uh, truck stops are, or where the next rest stops are, where you're going to get gasoline, and you need to think that over, because getting gas, you may have some place identified and find out it's too small or you're not comfortable bringing your rig into it, you might want to kind of keep an eye out for truck stops and use their gas facilities. 
if you're going to boondock, you're going to want to do a little research ahead of time. Where's the Walmarts? Where's casinos are a great place to boondock. Truck stops are great. I kind of avoid those kind of noisy and they uh, can get crowded. I've heard that you can sometimes use a Fred Myers or sometimes a Lowe's or a Home Depot out of desperation. I've seen uh, a couple of folks that uh, just in case they've gone to like a Fred Myers and they're, they're exhausted and they need a place that overnight and the store's still open, they actually just call the store, call the manager, tell them their situation that we've been driving all night. Is it okay if we spend the night in the parking lot and leave in the morning? Most likely they'll say yes. And they actually appreciate knowing that you're out there. And of course, if you are traveling, tell somebody where you're at, where you're going. So at least there's some accountability if you get from point A to point B is have somebody that you're uh, contacting on a regular basis and if they don't hear from you from a day or two have them work get worried a little bit and have them call you just make sure that you're okay so tell people where you're going it might help you it's you can't do it all the time but if you can contact somebody tell them where you're at all the time in our case, me and Sherry, we let our kids know where we're at, where we're going, what we're traveling that day. And we tend to uh, just do a, a nice little text saying, hey, we got here, we're good. And that's, you know, they sleep better and it also kind of covers me and Sherry in case we have an emergency. Another subject that's really important for a new RVer and just hitting the road. And it's different for everybody, but... For example, we live in the Northwest, me and Sherry, so we don't get a lot of severe weather. We get, you know, a lot of rain up here, and we get a couple windstorms, but I've traveled, so I've seen some crazy stuff. If you have not been exposed to some of this weather conditions, you need to back off. Don't do it. Say no. Is it so important to get from one point to another that you're willing to get yourself killed? And the answer to that is obviously no. But boy, some people push it. If you're gonna be hitting an area, like a mountain or going over a pass, check and see if there's snow or ice on that road. Um, or if there's gonna be some severe kind of weather coming through that's gonna uh, freeze the road and put a uh, black ice on the road, avoid it. Set it, you know, if, if you either go around it or wait for it to pass but snow and ice and heavy winds is dangerous a crosswind in the desert area will literally push your rig across the street and put you in a head-on collision uh, you have to be a good driver if you're into a crosswinds uh, uh, and, you, and it happens a lot in the open areas you're not used to that if you're from the no northwest pull over stop Go have lunch, watch TV, watch a movie. Let that stuff pass. It's not worth dying for. The other thing is, if you got a big rig and you're getting ready to go to big cities like um, Las Vegas, Seattle, La big cities like Dallas or whatever, it's better to think that through and not hit the uh, work traffic. Sometimes it's either easier to come into those cities early early in the morning very early or say eight o'clock at night when everybody's done from work the traffic is 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 controllable and it will take so much stress away and and uh, allow you to avoid an accident where everybody's in a rush so if you you need to think this stuff through just don't dive into a city and, and expect it to be easy it's very stressful and then the last but not least in weather is rain people underestimate how nasty rain can be now up in Washington we get you know drizzles and we get rain but then every once in a while we get brawling rain and of course down south you got monsoons and things like that once again the rain comes down so heavy you cannot get the water off your windshield fast enough. Get off the road. Pull over. It's not worth dying for. And a, a couple helpful little things that come up is 
if you're traveling and you're just like going to pull up to an RV park and just spend the night, let me tell you, that can get really expensive. It's not unusual to go to an RV park that you're not even going to be there for 10 hours and get charged 30 or 40 or 50 bucks for nothing. So really, when you're while you're traveling and going from point A to point B and you need a couple of days to get there, take that time to do that planning I was talking about and find the Walmarts. Find the rest areas, and I would kind of suggest staying away from rest areas. Uh, they tend to have a little bit of crime, and that's a whole other issue in itself, safety and being uh, having precautions to stay safe. We'll talk about that in another time, but I would say don't put rest areas as a place to spend the night. You're better off at places that have a little bit of security, like casinos or Walmarts, and some of the other places I mentioned earlier. Uh, avoid the heavy traffic, like I said, and also with your planning, ask yourself or try to study, and once again, again, Google Maps will help you, avoid bad roads. So if you get around the coast or you get around mountains, you're gonna get into some of the uh, side roads. You could get in a pickle. where you get into the roads that are very thin, they don't have good shoulders, and they can be very windy and you want to try to avoid those or at least pass through those area when the traffic is at the minimal and my final food for thought for new RVers just getting on the road I know all this is overwhelming and it's kind of scary and it's not really it's just common sense but the last thing you should really think about is you're pulling up or driving a giant unit that weighs tons so it seems easy to just throw stuff in your rig and throw it in there and stuff, but you want to ask yourself, are you, are you balanced? Are you distributing the weight on your unit appropriately? Is it too much to the right or left? Or is it too much to the front or back? And not just the stuff you put in it, but your propane and water and even septic tank, all that is weight. So if your tanks are all in the back and you've got those full, then you're going to be pretty heavy in the back. Or if you've got more things that are heavy all packed in the lower units that are heavy on the right-hand side or left-hand side, it can cause you to kind of uh, steer to the left or right. And so balancing your unit for it to perform properly and your shocks to work properly and, and your, your turning and sway bars to work properly, balance out your load. It's, it's a critical that you do that. So the other thing is try not to carry too much liquid. Liquid weighs a lot. And so if you don't empty your gray tanks, if you don't empty or you're carrying a full load of water, and in some cases you have to, or you haven't emptied your septic, you're carrying a lot of unnecessary weight. Not only that is could affect your balance, but it can also affect your gas mileage. So keep in mind and think through with your planning do I need to carry water if not is there a place I can dump all of our tanks you know or can I just carry a few gallons to get us from point point A to point B just be careful uh, the other thing is why you're traveling and, and this is a whole nother subject in itself is if you want to clean your water tank and make sure things are running good this is a good time to put water in the tank a little bit half a tank or so um, and put some uh, bleach in the water and while you're driving that thing's gonna be swishing all over cleaning that tank really well just remember that you're gonna have to flush that tank quite a few times and also you want to run your water with that bleach in it through your pipes at least once or twice to also clean out your pipes so there's some advantage to actually having a little water and maybe adding some cleaner like bleach and clean your tanks just remember wherever you go make sure that you have water available to you so you can flush your tanks about two or three times to get that bleach taste <laughs> out of the water and one of the biggest things I've heard about new people just hitting the road is cabinets and things that they've stored in their cabinets finding them all over the floor on their first journeys and it's because they didn't think it through so you gotta your RV is like in a constant 7.2 earthquake 
the whole time you're towing it. So you got to really think and open it every cabin and ask yourself, how would this react if it, I'm swaying back and forth? And it's not unusual for folks on their first trip to find their dishes on the floor, certain cabinets or drawers came open or, or uh, just uh, total <laughs> chaos. They, they, they open that door and go, oh my God. So take the time and really think through before your first trips of how is your load? How's your dishes? Do you have things? You may have to, to design special little holders or special little rubber bands or little bungee cords to hold certain drawers from opening and things. And of course, as you go on a couple of trips, and I would suggest on your first couple of hours and first couple of days, constantly pull over, go into the rig. If you have a fifth wheel trailer, because you can't see it if you're in a, a motor, like motorhomes, you can see what's going on. But check and see if you've had any trouble with any particular drawers or particular cabinets. And you may have to tie them together or do something kind of, may not look very pretty, but it's better than finding your dishes all over the floor. So checking your load, checking how you've stored everything will make your first couple of trips nice and you'll miss something or uh, it happens to everybody. But if you would just take the time at, at first to save yourself a lot of nightmares. The other thing I wanted to bring up is I've heard over and over again people having trouble with their um, bike racks. And some of them aren't built very durable. And a lot of times that bouncing up and down on the back will actually bend or even break um, inserts. So you might want to find a way to take a little bit of that pressure off from the bike swaying back and forth uh, at the, on the back of a trailer or RV. And that can easily be done with uh, either bungee cords or with uh, uh, straps that you can tighten up and take and maybe hook them to the ladder and put a uh, take a little bit of that pressure off the, the bikes bouncing up and down so it's time to introduce you to Russ from RV TV dot TV uh, Russ is a full-timer since 2006 and I found him to be a fascinating person to talk to. So with, uh, without further ado, here's our interview for the week. Well, hi, I'm Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio, and I have the privilege to talk to Russ from RVer TV. And if you want to see uh, Russ's reports and, and videos, he's got a website at RVer TV, and that's .tv not .com. He's also got a Twitter, a Facebook, and I haven't asked you, Russ, do you have a G, G Plus account? Uh, yeah, I have a Gmail and G Plus. Okay, good. So, Russ, thank you so much for uh, being on our show. Um, I've, uh, I was actually, I watch, I watch your channel every day, and I know you're down in the Havasu area, and uh, so i got to ask you a couple of questions, and then we'll find out a little bit more about what you're doing. Um, first of all, what's your you what's your age? I am sixty years old. No way! <laughs> I thought you were younger than that. Yep. <laughs> and where <laughs> where are you originally from? Uh, I was born and raised in Ohio, and then uh, I uh, after I grew up in my twenties, I moved to California, and I spent about thirty years in California. And then uh, in the last few years, I've been on the road. Wow. So, how long have you been an RVer then? I've been uh, full-time RVing since June of 2006. Oh my goodness, you've been on the road for a while. So, do you have a base or a, a home at all? Uh, I have a home base. I, I still live in RVs. I have uh, multiple RVs. I have like a toy hauler trailer I have set up up north, up in North Dakota. I'll get you. I get you. And... Uh, in Montana, and that region is kind of home base half the year, and then the other half I spend down here in the desert. Okay, so your home base is actually a, uh, a RV also? Yes. Oh. Yeah, I don't have a house. I, I'm a true blue, full-blooded <laughs> RVer. That's uh, awesome. Full-timer. I don't travel continuously, but I uh, live in an RV full-time. 
Gotcha. Okay, so I've noticed now if, uh, watching your videos, um, I've been seeing you in your, I believe it's a new RV that you've just refurbished, I believe. And you can tell me more in a minute here, but what kind of RV is it? It's a 1989 Atasca Winnebago Spirit. And that probably explains... It's a 22-foot Class A. Gotcha. And and you ha you get the name of your RV is Spirit, is that correct? Correct. I named it Spirit. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> and now you don't use a tow vehicle, do you? Not on this trip. This old RV, I didn't want to tow. It was just a, it's an older model. And uh, no, I'm kind of driving this thing uh, full time. And uh, I was going to ask you later, but I'm going to ask you now. I know you have a partner with you, and it happens to be a pet. Can you tell us a little bit about your pet? <laughs> yeah, I'm the proud chauffeur of uh, Scooby Two. She's a 14 year old lab uh, lab mix, and she's been traveling with me ever since I've been on the road. Wow, she travel well. Very well. She's uh, highly seasoned. Uh, I counted up one time. She's been in about 31 states so oh, far. Holy cow. So that kind of brings me yeah. to my next question for you. And uh, we got lots of questions for you. And uh, we're tickled pink having you on the show. Um, so now that you've been traveling since 2006, <laughs> has there been one particular state that's one, uh, your favorite? You know, I get asked that often, Rob, and uh, normally it's the one I'm in, you know, but uh, as for beauty, I mean, there's several, you know, like Utah is just gorgeous, Montana is, uh, with the Rockies is beautiful, and then the Plains, I mean, every state has its plus and minuses. Yeah. Uh, I would say more or less Montana for the beauty would be uh, one of my favorite places. Yeah, I agree with you. I've been there a little bit, and it's just gorgeous. But So, out of all the different states, is there any one or two or three places you would call your your favorite of places you've been? Um, well, uh, going past Montana, one is down in Utah, around the Provo area, mm -hmm. uh, in the central area. That is just beautiful there, and kind of peaceful. Uh, it's not overcrowded. And then um, Arizona, I, I really like the desert down here. Um, it's very unique. It's kind of like the, still like the Wild West, I guess you'd want to call it. Yeah. Do you like the south or the north side of, or the whole state? Of, of, uh, of Arizona? Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, southern part. Northern, it's kind of remote. And uh, you can still see snow up there in the winter. I kind of like the, one of the goals of being down here is to be out of the winter. That's true. So, uh, yeah. I love the Lake Havasu, Parker, and Quartzsite area. Nice. So now that you've, um, you probably have been to a lot of RV parks. So do you have any RV parks that have stood out from the rest? And when you do, do uh, go to an RV park, um, what do you, what's, what do you look for in an RV park? Well, I'm a little bit different. Um, yeah, there's a couple RV parks that really stand out. One I just recently uh, went to was in Nebraska. It was kind of like an oasis out in the middle of nowhere off I-80. And it was actually named Prairie Oasis RV Park right off I-80. Ah. And uh, near Henderson, Nebraska, that was just a beautiful, it was an old KOA that got remodeled. And it was just a beautiful place, real scenic, real green, had a fishing pond huh. and that kind of thing. I'm not one to uh, really get all into like the tennis courts and all that kind of stuff. You know, you have like RV resorts right? and you have your RV parks and then you just have the old gravel pit with a hookup. <laughs> and to give you an example, I just stayed in Shamrock, Texas, not too long ago. And that was a gravel parking lot with hookups, but it was beautiful. You could see the stars. There there was no bathrooms or showers, but it was, they even had cable TV there. And it was 15 bucks a night. Nice. <laughs> so I, I got to ask, since you've been up, um, well, I'll kind of go into, do you, 
you, from what I've been watching, it looks like you go into RV parks every once in a while, and I also get the impression you boondock a little. Um, so, um, when, when, oh, when you're doing some of that, um, I'm going to ask, because especially since you boondock a little bit, what kind of uh, electronics do you use to kind of uh, keep in touch with the world? Okay, uh, when I do boondock, I have, I, when I've uh, remodeled Spirit, this old motorhome, I added a 300-watt solar system to it. And also there's eight batteries on this thing, which is huge. Yeah. It has huge storage capacity, and uh, I have like a 1,200-watt uh, inverter that I can convert 12-volt into 110. Mm -hmm. I also use uh, Verizon <laughs> MiFi. Gotcha. And I do have a couple uh, Wi-Fi repeaters on board. Um, and you, uh, which particular repeater are you? Uh, did you just put on? Uh, I just purchased the Radio Labs uh, repeater, mm -hmm. and my old one was a Jeffatech. Oh, gotcha! I know we talked about that uh, a couple of days ago, and you said uh, you've uh, been pretty happy with it. Yeah, uh, it. The repeater, if you can find an open signal, it'll definitely pick it up and bring it into you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think... Anymore, it's getting harder and harder to find an open signal. Yeah, I, I noticed that too. Uh, and we use the Wi Fi Ranger, and we talked about that too. But uh, um, any system's a good system. Anything we can do to get internet and, and get it. Um, have you, even with the repeaters and even with your phone, have you been any place where neither one uh, could connect to the internet? <laughs> yeah what kind yeah and and with verizon that's kind of hard but uh if you can if you get up into some of the mountains especially up in montana uh, -huh. uh there's several places where you lose all kinds of cell phone you know you're just way too up high up in the mountains yeah you're true and uh you're truly a little bit through up. nevada nevada's kind of sparse too for uh, cell phone coverage yeah i got that impression uh some of the other folks i follow the I, I, I can kind of tell they have a hard time getting internet. So um, when you're when you're out there, and, and I'm doing this for folks that are just starting out or going to, have you noticed since you've been full timing for a long time? Is there any particular tools or resources that you constantly reuse over and over? Anything stand out that you have that you say, boy, I'm just glad I have this. Oh, well, uh, yeah, I, it, one thing, I'm very safety conscious. And, you know, when you're RVing, you just got to be uh, have your eyes open a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you got to know your surroundings, where you park. Uh, one thing I do is I do a little bit of research before I hit an area, figure out where the hospitals are, where, you know, and just kind of Google Maps is probably uh, a godsend now, <laughs> really zoom in on areas and i'll either have a plan a plan b or plan c which is 100 miles 150 or 200 miles down the road gotcha you know and that you case, just you just brought up mechanical some, problems you can stop and get something fixed or whatnot yeah you just brought up a subject that i know i've never covered but when you're traveling and and folks like you and i we're kind of getting up in age and a little bit we have to be more of aware of our our health and and issues that could come up and I never really thought about it, and I guess I would if, if I was on the road like you, but keeping in mind where the hospitals and, and, and medical clinics are in, in relationship to where you're at, um, that was a good point you brought up. Well, yeah, and it's extremely important, too. And uh, even like traveling with my pet, if I'm going to be in an area for a while, I'll research that. I want to know where the closest vet you know, 24 hour bed is and that kind of thing too. So, it, and if you're traveling with kids or what, whatever you're traveling, uh, uh, it's always good information to have. Yeah. Have you had any issues with your pet at all while you've been on the road where you um, <laughs> got a little scared or worried? Yeah, I almost lost her. As a matter of fact, she was down here in the desert. It was uh, about four years ago. She picked up uh, what they call valley fever which is a common disease in, like, horses and cattle. Yeah. And it comes out, it's a spore that comes out of the dust uh, when it's wet. 
And uh, at 5 o'clock in the morning, I was in Quartzsite, and the, the closest vet was in Blythe, California, and this guy met me at 5 in the morning and saved the dog's life. He recognized it instantly mm-hmm. and treated her for it and saved her. And, yeah, it, it, and once again, I had researched that, and through the power of the Internet, I had found that uh, vet clinic. Yeah, do you happen to know, did uh, did that vet tell you that there's any kind of uh, vaccines that uh, that might be wise for a dog that's in a desert area? There's no vaccine. It's basically an antibiotic, and the antibiotic can kill the dog as well. Uh, they, they normally treat like horses and cows with this uh, stuff, and that's how high-powered the antidote is for it. Wow. And, and if it's not caught within... Uh, 24 hours, it's your pets are gone there. Wow, that's scary. And, uh, it's just something. Yeah, when when you have your pet out in the desert, you know, and it's been raining and whatnot, keep them out of the wet dirt. I know it's hard to say, but you got to <laughs> keep them indoors a little bit. Yeah. Once it dries out, it's fine. Yeah, that would break my. Gone. That would break my heart to have my to be traveling and lose cinder. Um, that would just break our hearts. But that is some really. Oh, God. <laughs> that's good that's good information yeah. for us to know so so yeah uh, on and that... the way she reacted she was paralyzed i mean uh wow. and what they do then they just they're just totally stiff and shape oh my god they're paralyzed like that wow have you heard of anybody yeah. having the same issue with cats down there at all is that something a cat can get to i haven't heard i don't have a cat personally i haven't heard of any issues with that and but uh, several dogs have picked that up down down mm-hmm. in this direction. So it's once again it's mainly in like uh, January ish, February ish, where it's been raining a lot. Wow! And if you're out in the hardcore desert, so it's kind of staying with that same kind of issue. Have you had any interesting issues or challenges in the, since 2006 that really stand out? Uh, RV and, uh, well, mm. yeah, I mean, uh, uh, y- you can break down. Um, I bought a diesel pusher a couple of years ago. I flew back to Ohio and picked it up. was driving it back to Montana. The exhaust manifold broke in <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> I mean, what do you do? You know, I limped it back, but, uh, uh it, it's, anything can happen. If you're going to break down, it will happen to you. Sooner or later, you will break down on the road. Yeah. You just got to be prepared for it. Yeah, we uh, we try to do reviews with our listeners, and just trying to go through all the little things that are nice to have on board because something's going to happen, and the more you're prepared for it, the better. Yeah, and you almost have to budget for it. You know, people say, well, you don't have a house payment. Well, you still have all your insurances. You yeah. can still pay rent and RV parts and all that. And, uh but you need to budget for maintenance too. There is a uh, cost to having a RV every year. Agreed. So, uh, and and in your in your travels, and and since you you've been doing this for so long, I, I'm sure this is kind of a loaded question to you. But is there one or two people that you have met that just stood out from all the rest that just just amazed you, or that that if it wasn't for RVing, you wouldn't have met them? There's more than two, but uh, <laughs> to give you an example, I worked at an RV park for a few years, and I was the manager, and uh, I'll never forget this one gentleman. He was an older gentleman. He came in. He was kind of shaken and kind of shook up. He was driving a brand-new Class A, and he goes, you got to put me in a spot that's wide. I, I don't want to run into anything. He goes, I've been hitting stuff all the way since I left, uh, <laughs> I forget, it was Utah or somewhere. Uh-huh. And to, and to find out, I thought, well, you've been drinking. No, uh, he had been uh, taking care. He was a caregiver for his wife. He had converted the inside of that motorhome into uh, like a hospital room for his wife. Wow. It was taking her on her last voyage because they rv together for over 25 years. That's awesome. And that just broke my heart. I mean, uh, and so I put him in a big wide spot. I didn't charge him. I went and bought groceries for him, and they stayed there for about five days. That's a, and I got to meet his wife. She could sit up in bed, but she could not get out of that RV. That was and, amazing. Yeah, that I mean, and God bless him. That was about oh five years ago. Yeah, and who knows what happened to him since? 
That is one. And then uh, uh, the other ones I've met is like young family, you know, that are just lost their house. They moved into a trailer and try to make the best of it. Yeah. You know, especially during that recession and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, there's many. A lot of folks have discovered RVing since 2008. Actually, the RV industry is a great career. Uh, it kept me marching right through that uh, recession. I didn't see because uh, I was in the RV business by then. Yeah, uh, I'm going to have you kind of tell us a little bit more about that in a minute because uh, you told me some things earlier that uh, I wanted to definitely share with our listeners. But I got to ask a couple a couple more questions. Is uh, um, since you do so much boondocking and do so much RV parks and stuff. Have you found it necessary or uh, have you found a favorite membership or club club memberships that have been beneficial to you? Like Good Sam or anything like that? Yeah, Good Sam is popular, you know, and that goes by region too. Yeah. Uh, like up in the Northwest, Good Sam is everywhere. If you get down like in the, the Central Plains and Northern Plains, uh, KOA is popular there. You know, it's amazing how when you go into different spots, it, that Passport America is another popular one. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and I don't remember all the other ones, but uh, but Good Sam, I'd say you'd be covered, or KOA. Yeah, interesting. Um, it's kind of funny, as, uh, and I'd I like to hear your opinion on it. You've probably met a lot of RVers, and we have too, and we interview a lot of them. It's. Uh, I thought I'd find more people with some of those club memberships, like Thousand Trails and and some um, up here to Cam Resorts and stuff. And I'm actually have not. I've only ran into one or two, very little. Um, but I've heard a lot of folks using like this Good Sam and Passport America. Has that been kind of true in your endeavors? Yeah. Yeah. That that Thousand Trail stuff and all that. You find that like in Southern California those big RV resorts where they have like 500 sites and they're always desperate to fill their sites. Yeah. And so they'll take on anything there. And that's where you see a lot of that stuff. Um, so um, talking about, we were talking about your electronics here a little bit earlier for television. Do you do anything special? Like do you use cable or anything like that? Or do you use a satellite? No, I got rid of satellite. There. I got tired of paying that hundred bucks a month for a hundred, two hundred channels I never watched. <laughs> I, what I did, uh, I installed a King Jack uh, digital uh, power antenna, uh -huh. and that thing will pick up stations miles away. And you, so you get all the locals like ABC, NBC, and whatnot. Yeah. And I have a twelve volt TV. It's all a twenty two inch twelve volt TV, gotcha. and that's more than enough for me. Yeah. What um, I do have, though, is satellite radio. I did splurge on that. I enjoy that. Yeah. I, I actually enjoy that, too. So, um, Now, since you move around and stuff, uh, have you had any problems getting your mail? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, yeah, mail is always an issue. I use uh, a couple friends' addresses. I have my own personal addresses as well. Uh -huh. The trouble is, once it gets there, it's getting it to wherever I'm at. Mm -hmm. Now, when I'm at my home base, it's no problem. But when you're on the road, mail is always an issue. Yeah. Do you tend to move a lot, or do you try to, um, you know, uh, smell the roses a little bit? Oh, I smell the roses. I, I, I still have to work. I mean, I do travel in spurts. I have my, what I call a vacation mode, and I go travel. Uh, while and you know visit family and friends but also i have to work so i'm in my home bases then so i uh, may can, can i have a clue of kind of what you do for a living i uh do rv repair i've been in the rv business i buy and sell used rvs i do uh, rv restoration as well oh that's beneficial everywhere so so i want before i forget uh, we talked earlier, and you um, you just did a video of an overview of Courtside, and I and when I had a chance to meet you, I I asked you you know um, about it, and, and you just blew me away because uh, not only have you been in Courtside, but you've actually 
worked in and actually were a vendor at a time and also sales in, in Quartzsite. Is that true? Yes, I was a vendor there from 2007 through 2010. And uh, uh, my first experience in Quartzsite was in 04. I wasn't uh, a seller then. And mm. then uh, when I became a full-time RVer in 06, I started going back down there just for the weather. And then I had started to make money, so I attempted it uh, my uh, hand at vending. Interesting. So you did that for quite a while. Yeah, four years, four, four winners in a row. Huh. So i got to ask you, I, I've watched the video down there, and I've driven by it, but do they still have that crazy bookstore down there with that guy that runs around with his very little... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they sure do. That guy is a character. You know, he was once the mayor of Quartzite many moons ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know, when you see him, his skin is so leathered that it, it doesn't even look like he's... Uh, Naked, you know, it, 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 yeah. it's, he's a character. Is he still there? Oh, yeah, he's there. He'll, he'll play the piano for you. And his bookstore is extremely well done, it's very well laid out. Yeah. Uh, he's a connoisseur of good books. He's also a musician, he has a local band there. I'll be darned. Now, he does wear clothes when he uh, plays in, the, in his <laughs> band, he will wear clothes. And also, he, uh, uh, when he rides around town, they made him, he puts on like a, one of those Roman know, thong things, whatever they call them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> when he rides his bicycle around town. Man. So well, with your travels and stuff, have you had any, uh, do you have any trouble at all, like uh, getting money at all? Like if you're in certain towns or cities, have you had any trouble like finding banks or telling machines or anything where you've had a hard time getting funds or anything? Yes, uh, and uh, most small towns don't have national banks, and only the larger ones do. And uh, I use Wells Fargo, and they're pretty much everywhere nationwide. And normally, you can find uh, one of their branches somewhere within a reasonable distance. Yeah, unless I mean, you can go use an ATM at an off-branch bank, but you're going to pay for it. Yeah, yeah. So here's the big question of the day, and, and and you'd be the best one to answer this, but is there any time, or I just plain old, do you ever miss having a house? Uh, not anymore. Uh, once in a while I did. You know, like I'll go to friends' houses and sit on their couch and look around. And <laughs> I mean, I could have a house if I wanted. Yeah. I just don't want one. And I used to own rentals in California. I owned homes. I, 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 I've had a lot of houses in my day. Yeah, me too. But uh, right now, I'm just content as I can be uh, RV in it. So the answer is no, I don't miss a house. <laughs> and so now I got, we've got to look at the future a little bit. So what, what, is, what is Russ's uh, future plans in, as far as RVing? Well, continue on the same path. I still have to work. I'm still in a work in progress on the road. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to expand uh, my RV business. I, I'd like to get into uh, a little more of the sales, uh, increase my uh, buying and selling of the used RVs. There's a huge market for that. Yeah, yeah. That's for and sure. um, I don't know if I could say travel more, but I'd like to spend a little longer time. So when I do go to certain places, that would be nice. I could afford that a little bit more. Yeah. Is there are certain areas that you haven't had a chance to go to yet that you want to get on your uh, checklist? The extreme northeast, like up in Maine, Rhode Island, Connecticut. Yeah. Uh, I've been to like Ohio and Pennsylvania. And, uh, I'd like to do the east coast, uh, go down through the Carolinas. Have you uh, any... I've done that, but never in an RV. You know, I've been to those states, but many years ago, but yeah, I was an RV. And then. Any desire to go to uh, Alaska at all? No. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people that have, that is just a grueling drive. You're, that's a close to 3,000 miles of a punishing road. <laughs> um, most people come back with a broken RV after they go up there, and there's it's limited to see. 
my suggestion that I probably would go up there, but I would fly up and rent an RV. Yeah, yeah. And, and then uh, fly back. So um, uh, kind of talking about the future, but also just the, the uh, lifestyle. If you had a chance to do something different since 2006, let's say, that kind of stands out as far as uh, as far as RVing. Uh, is there something you would have done different um, back then that would have changed things today? Um, maybe it get a little wiser. I bought I lived in quite a few different RVs. I went from a motor home to a trailer, and when I did that, then I had to get in the pickup trucks. I kind of wish I would have stuck with motor homes a little bit more. I'm back into the motor home. Yeah world now but uh that was probably about the only thing i would have done different uh do you uh do you ever uh besides just the rv repair and stuff have you uh utilized work camping at all um uh, not anymore after managing an rv park for a few years uh i had my fill of that and <laughs> uh it, it's kind of a thankless job it's good for a lot of people they uh if they enjoy it, that's fine. Basically, all you're going to make is your rent, maybe some propane or electric. You know, it's a low-paid and no-paid type position. And um, the other thing, I, before I forget, I, I, these, I have some unique questions for you because I just, I really enjoy talking to you. Is uh, you well, said? Well, I enjoy talking to you too, Rob. <laughs> I, uh, you just said that you started your YouTube channel just this year, didn't you? Yeah, I was putting out a few videos on YouTube personally, but uh, in May of this year, I started RV or TV, and uh, basically, I wanted to document what I was doing, and it was kind of just for me. Yeah. Uh, RV or TV is uh, actually my initials are RV. Yeah, I got that impression. My last name starts with a V, so it's uh, <laughs> Russell V, and so that's what RV or really means. It's not about. <laughs> RVs, RVs, but yeah. I do live in RV, so it, <laughs> <laughs> I know it's it like when you told me that, I go, I never because I know what your last name is, and I was like, I never hit me that that is RV, so I was like, wow, that's a good good name. Yeah, <laughs> and that is the true meaning of RV or TV is that, and uh, yeah, I just started it, but now I'm up to like 120 videos. I got you know several hundred subscribers now, and it's starting to take off, and I really enjoy it. I have done photograph and video for dozens of years yeah, yeah. It's always been a hobby you do a wonderful and job now I can combine uh, it all together yeah yeah i love the way you do your videos you do a really good job and uh, uh it, they're a pleasure to watch thanks yeah now uh, so i gotta ask you uh, um what kind of cameras are you using well i have four gopros which i utilize almost all of them Mm -hmm. uh, I have a Sony uh, X6000, KX6000 that I use a lot. That's a digital type. Uh, it's, I got away from the DSLRs. Right. Uh, I have a Canon XA25, which is a high-end prosumer-like video, but I don't use that very often. That's more like a studio camera. Yeah. Then I have uh, two quadcopters that I use, and... Uh, that's about it for the arsenal. Yeah. I do have a time lapse camera as well, a Rhino, cheap old Rhino, but it makes good quality time lapse videos. Yeah. Do you do any of your time lapses with your GoPros? I do, but I don't care for the fisheye lens on a GoPro distorts, and it, when you're in time lapse, uh, it looks okay, but it's not what I look for. Uh, that Rhino has a regular lens on it. Yeah. And uh, the Brino, to me, even though it's a little lesser quality, uh, is uh, ten times more the, the what I want to see in a time lapse. Yeah, it does the sunrises and sunsets just beautiful. Yeah, I've seen some of your uh, time lapse, and you're doing it with that. Is it called a Brino? You said. Yeah, it's um, it's a basically a cheap camera. It's. They're about 200 bucks. You can find them on eBay. Uh -huh. uh, a lot of construction sites use them. You can set them to take a photograph once a day or every minute or half second mm. or whatever. And uh, it'll produce its own. You don't have to post-edit the pictures together. 
to get the time lapse. It'll make the movie for you. Nice. You're the first yeah, one. Yeah, and is they it? have lenses for it, as is all I was going to say, too. You can get different lenses. Yeah, you're actually the first one I've ever met that had more GoPros than me. <laughs> I, I have two, and people go, what do you need two for? I'm like crazy on, on them. And, but, you know, I use them, you know, yeah, believe it too. or not. And yep. if one goes down, once in a while I have one in the shop. Now, I did have one retrofitted. It's got a uh, Rage Cam. It's a company called Rage Cam, and they make uh, modified lenses for GoPros. Mm. And they take the fisheye lens out, and they put in a regular lens in it. That was very expensive. Oh. And basically, that one I use in the quadcopter. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, uh, about two years ago, we did the quadcopter thing, too, but... It, it was getting to a point. I was like, I uh, there was so much debate going on about using quadcopters that I kind of like, I'm not going to mess with it. Just I'll let other people do it. <laughs> but, yeah, I I don't fly as much as I used to. I do fly it. Uh, I just wrecked mine here a couple weeks ago and waiting on parts. But uh, um, so it's it, it's an expensive toy. That's for sure. That's for sure. And uh, what kind of um, software are you using for your editing? I use, uh, I'm all Apple. I've been an Apple user for eons. And uh, I use iMovie, and also I use Final Cut Pro. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, iMovie I, is a simple version, and Final Cut is just a, like a pro version of iMovie. Yeah, and okay. uh, they're both intertwined, and you can send the movies back and forth to, between the two softwares. And, uh, Good deal. I'm self-taught. I have no computer training whatsoever. So. Well, I think you could probably teach people. So what I've seen so far has been really good. Well, thanks. Uh, and a lot of that's in, it's not all in the editing. It's in uh, how you shoot the video, too. Uh, uh, what I see most mistakes and people make is they jerk the camera. They try to edit while they're filming, and you can't do that. Yeah, yeah. You know, stay on the shot whether you can shoot a scene for a minute you might only use 10 seconds but at least you got a minute to decide you know get that 10 seconds out of yeah so here's here's the big one for you this is this is your platform so if you had a message for others wanting to be an RVer what is some of the things that you'd want to pass on to them well it's a extremely unique world you know it and it's not for the faint of heart uh, if if you enjoy traveling and like being out, it's you're away from the safety of your home. And I, I'd say that's probably the biggest thing that I see people really jump into an RV and then six months later they sell it. So, uh, you know, just uh, if you're really open to travel, and also be ready for the unexpected too, the breakdowns, mm -hmm. the bad RV parks, you know. Things will happen, but also there's a lot of good out there too. What could um, just kind of stand on that flavor a little bit? Has there been any? And you're the best person to, to, to uh, talk about this. What is some of the biggest surprise uh, <clears throat> surprises that you found when you got into the RV world that you didn't account for, but it kind of showed up? <laughs> well, you know. The, the stereotype of an RVer is the rich retired doctor in the big motorhome. Yeah. You know, and what 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 you really find is uh, ninety five percent of the people that are RVers are just down to earth, hard working people. Agreed. You know that uh, decided to change their life and uh, travel, and uh, you, you meet a lot of good people. That, and that so do. it doesn't matter in an RV park, you could have the lowest income person parked right next to the, you know, rich doctor and his uh, uh, two and a half million dollar prevos. I agree. Know, so it doesn't matter. Yep. We see that every day where we're at. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah. And yeah. And so, I mean, uh, uh, it, it, it was kind of stereotype, I, in my opinion, when I first got in this, but I, I found out completely different. Yeah. Oh, well, Russ, um, this, I've had, had you uh, interviewing here for quite a while, and I, I could probably keep you on for an hour, but our listeners would probably <laughs> wear their ear out. So well, I promise Russ um, that he's been doing a lot of traveling, and so uh, we're going to try to keep in touch, as you and I talked about, and 
have you kind of talk about some of the areas that you're at every month or so and they bring you back on the show. And uh, uh, we're, I'm really looking forward to that. That's going to be a lot of fun. So I'm kind of hoping that we get Russ as a first time uh, on a first name basis with us and kind of give us reports of some of the latest areas that you've been and, and some of the things that you enjoyed the most and that we can share with people to go to and go check out. Oh, I'd be happy to, Rob. That would be a lot of fun. And uh, you can call me anytime. We'll, I'll keep you updated. Uh, right now, the goal this winter is I'll be within Southern California and Southern Arizona most of the winter. And there's a lot of activities here that all relate to RV and so yeah. hopefully it'll be of interest to your listeners. Yeah, I'm hoping me and Sherry will be able to catch up with you uh, towards January, I believe. We'll be down south there, too. So. I'll be contacting you. Oh, Maybe please. we can catch up for for uh, meet for dinner or lunch or something. That'd be really great. You bet. So. And I'll even let you buy. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> no, I'll, I'll make. I'll but, make. Sure, no, I'll, that that sounds good. I'll make sure and meet you right after you sell a a, a new RV. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. Right now, it's all making videos. Uh, I kind of took a little siesta from all that. Yeah really working the youtube channel right now so. good well let me uh, double check that and uh, make sure that everybody knows how to find you your blog or your website i uh is rvr tv dot tv not dot com but dot tv so it's rv e r tv dot tv and you also have uh, an, in in your youtube channel which from our site there'll be a link to your to all these places but um, YouTube, you just have to type in the search uh, for RV or TV, and then you'll come right up. I've tested that. You also have a Facebook, and uh, I also know you have a Twitter account, and we just verified you also have a G Plus account. So I would recommend folks to get on there, say hello to Russ. He's uh, uh, really good about getting back to you. Um, I was really impressed uh, when we contacted one another. We uh, um, he, he got contacted us right back didn't make us wait and then you uh just a great guy to talk to so russ i want to thank you very much for being on rv uh, <laughs> rv talk radio and uh i'm really looking forward to having you on and uh, regularly uh once or twice a year or so whenever we can and um i i really hope that all your travels go well and everything goes safe for you well thank you rob and i really appreciate uh you have me on too i really enjoy your channels as well they're all good to watch well thank you and uh for our folks out there i highly recommend you go see rv or tv and say hello to russ well that concludes our show today i want to thank russ from rv or tv for interviewing with us he's a fascinating guy and i'm looking forward to having him on the show some more and we wish everybody happy RVing and we love all of our travel buddies out there. Please be safe. Please have fun. And like we say here at RV Travel Buddy and RV Talk Radio, what are you waiting for? Take care now. Bye.